Welcome to New Entry Wrestling Podcast, baby! Welcome back to New Entry Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Sexy Ian, with my co-host, Ever. What it do, baby? Hey, Ian. Hey, listen out there. How you guys doing? What's up, Ever? Nothing much, man. It's, it's a good day. It's good November. day. November, baby. But ever before we get started, go ahead and let the listener know about our shop. All right, listeners, before we get started. Even though um, we already started. Yeah, but yeah, before we get started or continue, please check out our merch store on teespring.com. Search for New Entry Wrestling Podcast. We got pretty cool shirts, masks, and posters. Face masks, I mean. And posters. And go follow our Instagram at New Entry Wrestling Pod. Thank you. Yeah, we're also, you know, if you don't have Spotify, we're also on Google Pop, uh, Google Podcasts, what else, Apple Podcasts, Anchor. Anchor, um, there's a couple other ones too. A couple other ones that we don't know, but yeah, we, we out there, we out there dancing and chilling like a villain, baby. But anyways, today's episode is pretty dope because we got, well, uh, what's ever got an interview with one of the code owners we got an interview with um executive producer of royal wrestling if you don't know in chicago and area Warner wrestling is it's it's new and it's uh you know it's getting popular it's, it's like if anybody watches pwg it's like that so you get all these big stars they have a show coming up in december on the 12th in timley park well osprey yeah will osprey they got thunder rosa so far they got brody king they got fuego sol they got uh chelsea green Ooh. And this is just like the beginning. This is not even the whole show. That's minus the champion, Trey Miguel. Uh, Thunder, well, she's the woman's champion. Thunder Rosa is the woman's champion. And um, Aramis, he's the uh, lucha champion. So that's that's not, that's that's not the whole lineup, guys. So we have an interview with the executive producer. His name is Eric Hamilton of Warrior Wrestling. We're, we're really glad he decided to join us and take time out of his busy day. And, you know. Yeah, man, I'm excited. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get into this interview. Let's go. Hey, guys, uh, this is Eric. He's from Warrior Wrestling right here in the Chicago South South uh, Southside Chicago suburbs. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining us. Absolutely, happy to be here. Yeah, thank you for doing this. Ah, oh, there's a don't fly. Oh well, <laughs> this is what happens when you're live recording. Hey, Eric. So, uh, do you want to tell the listeners or the viewers a little bit about yourself uh sure um my name is derek uh, i'm one of the um um executive producers of uh warrior wrestling uh, me and oh, steve yeah, uh, kind of turned that into our little baby a couple years ago and um big fans of wrestling independent wrestling um lucky enough to to be a part of it yeah uh Warrior Wrestling like really blew up here and it, <laughs> it's like it's crazy how because to me you guys remind me of a uh, PWG uh, pro wow. wrestling gorilla but a family version of it <laughs> yeah and um, yeah it's really Steve cool how went, you guys do it yeah well PWG is one of our inspirations um, Steve and I uh, Steve actually lived in LA for a couple years and um, like right after undergrad and uh, when I would go out to visit him, he he told me like you've gotta you've gotta see this, and we never made it out there when he lived there. Uh, but I want to say it was December of fifteen. Uh, we went out there for All Star Weekend, and um, it, we went back to back shows. It was it was incredible. I was I was hooked ever since. So we're huge fans of PWG, and a lot of what we do is kind of inspired by what they were able to put together and build and create wow that's natty i i'm gonna i did not knew that that's really cool though because i love pwg and it's and um i'm glad they're still around to be honest yeah it's slowly coming oh around absolutely right uh so what what so you kind of just mentioned it how you you guys got the idea from pwg what was like okay let's let's get it started so the idea to, to actually like start our own company, um, that was, that, that came from Steve. Um, he is the principal at the high school where we've ran all of our shows thus far. And um, 
he and I both spent a long time working in Catholic schools in the Catholic school system. And uh, one of the things that Catholic schools are always trying to do is raise funds to improve the school, to keep tuition down for any number of reasons. And um, one day he just kind of had this idea of what if I could combine my two biggest passions in life, wrestling and Catholic education. And uh, he, he had this idea to start putting on independent wrestling shows and taking the, the money from the profits of those shows and then putting them into the school, putting them into scholarship funds specifically. Um, he approached me for the idea and kind of wanted to know what my thoughts were and things like that. And I told him it's a, it's a great idea. I have no idea if it would work, um, but I love the concept. And so we kind of went back and forth with different ideas and different options of, of running the shows and where to run the shows and how to run the shows. And um, what was it, May 11th of 18, we finally got off the ground with our uh, first show and just kind of been off to the races ever since. So how, I gotta ask, uh, how did the first show go? So the first show went better than it probably should have. Um, we've, so, so Steve and I have never put on a wrestling show before, but we've, we've been working together literally since, uh, 2002. Um, so by the time 2018 came around, we, we've been best friends for 16 years and working together both professionally, uh, and, you know, obviously socially just being good buddies. Uh, so we were able to kind of fall back on our relationship and knowing each other and knowing how the other person thinks and reacts to different situations, uh, cause there's so many moving parts to a, a live show and to be able to kind of keep it all together. Um, it really helps to have someone that, you know, well, that you trust that is able to kind of make decisions on the fly. And when, like, if we were both presented with like the same situation needing to find a solution, 95% mm -hmm. of the time, we're both going to come up with the same solution and right, we right. not have to cut it back and forth. Just our mind, the way our minds work at this point. Um, and so that, that helped us a lot that first day. There was a lot of things we didn't know, um, you know, but you don't know what you don't know when you're getting started. And so we relied on the help of each other. We relied on the help of the volunteers who were there. Uh, we relied on the help of the wrestlers. Uh, these guys are the pros. They're the ones who've been doing this for a lot longer than we have. Uh, and so we all kind of came together and, and everybody was invested in making it a good show. Um, I think the fact that it was connected to, you know, the, the Catholic school and raising money for uh, scholarships, uh, people were invested in it. People, even the wrestlers were like, we really want this to kind of be a cool thing. Um, that that is one of the things that saved us too, where, you know, we're just, we're just <laughs> two guys uh, who, who decided to try and combine two passions. And um, we, we've been very blessed uh, with everything along the way. Oh, that's good to hear. That's like, I didn't knew half of that stuff. And <laughs> so it's uh, crazy how well it worked out. And I'm glad it did. And it's especially since you're doing it for the kids and for their college fund, right? Did I get that? Uh, right? scout fund for the like, tuition. Yeah, tuition. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that's an important thing to me. So I actually went to Marian Catholic. Uh, that's where Steve and I met. Cool. And, um, my dad got laid off after 9-11 uh, back in 2001. I was a sophomore. And um, I was a recipient of that same scholarship that we're raising funds for now. Um, so for me personally, it's, it's a really cool way to be able to give back to something that I benefited from in my childhood and my youth. So um, that's, that's one of the reasons why it's so important to me too. No, that's good. That's awesome. that was really <laughs> awesome. Um, you have anything? thing to ask so how 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 did uh when you approach the school like i know uh steve is the principal right um yep. how did how how did you guys come up how did the um, idea come together with the school board i know because it has to be through the school board and everything and how did how did they like how do you guys like talk to the school board or the school like this you know we want to do this idea Sure. So um, being a Catholic school helps. There's there's far less, um, there's really no school board necessarily. Um, there's a president of the school that we had to pitch the idea to. And um, Steve actually, when we pitched the very first show, Steve had this whole PowerPoint presentation with like 75 slides and why this is a worthwhile an opportunity and investment and why should we put our time and energy into it. 
and all this stuff and, and how it could help. And the, I mean, like we were ready for 25 just different reasons why they would say no. Um, and out of those like 75 slides, I think Steve was on like, like slide six and uh, Vince Kredinsky is the uh, president of the school. And I think Steve made it through the first six slides and Vince goes, I love it. I'm in. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that was that. I mean, it was, uh, it was one of those things again, where like, like I said, we've just been blessed along the way. I mean, there were any number of reasons why he could have just looked at us and been like, you guys are crazy. Thanks for, you know, thinking of a outside the box kind of an idea, but nah, we're not interested. Um, but no, I mean, he, he's been on board since the very beginning. Uh, and that's actually kind of one of the stories, fun stories about Warrior Wrestling too. When we made the first one, we had no idea that we would, that there would ever be a second show or a third show or a I was actually going to ask that. Was this, was this going to be a one-time thing? And it just became, you know, uh, more the uh, seed that you thought it would, that you guys continue? Yeah, actually, that's, that's kind of how it happened. So we, for the first show, we had no idea how it was going to go. Um, you know, like we were tracking ticket sales, making sure obviously we didn't want the school to lose money. Um, but we, we had no idea the, the, um, popularity it would have, especially, you know, your very first show, there's no buzz, you know, there's no fans who have been to other shows telling their friends, Hey, come on, you know? So, um, we, we assumed it was going to be a one and done type thing, um, kind of a, a single show event and it would be fun and we'd make some money and everybody have a good time and go home. Um, but it went so well that after the first show, once all the, the, the money was deposited and collected and we were able to look at what were the actual costs to the school for using the space and using the, the parking lot and the concessions and all that stuff, you know, was it worth the school's time to put on the show and put on another show? And did we think we could even do this again? I mean, was this like a you know, we just got lucky and, and, and maybe the next one doesn't work out so well. So we took some time off after the first show. And then we kind of, because that was in May. Our second show was in September, I believe, of 18. It was that um, Labor Day weekend. It was the day after All Out, the, the first All. No, oh, actually, yeah, yeah. All Out, all, right. All, all In? or All In. All yeah, in. it's All Out now. It was actually, yeah, yeah, it was All In at the time. And um, we saw the opportunity that there was going to be a lot of wrestling fans in Chicago for All In. And um, we were lucky enough to use some of the talent that was on All In. Um, our second show had Lucha Brothers and Rey Mysterio, um, who were major players in that All In um, pay-per-view. They may have entered the show. <laughs> right, right. Well, and, and I think, um, who was it? I think? Penta had that had a match against I want to say it was Kenny Omega that show yeah. um that was also the show when when Chris Jericho snuck in and they did like the lights out and then Jericho came out and he was in Penta's gear and so then we right. took it off yeah so um but yeah we were lucky enough to have them on that show um and and I, that was the show that kind of put us um I don't know map <laughs> map but like it, it, it put a, it gave some like legitimacy to the company because when when guys like that and names like that are willing to come work for you, uh, it sends a message across the industry and, and especially to other wrestlers like, hey, I mean, if, if Rey Mysterio says these guys are worth his time, who am I to say they're not worth my time? Um, right. And that that right there helped us um, immensely. We were to this day we were actually Rey Mysterio's last independent booking because the 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 very next time he was in a wrestling ring, he was back with WWE. Wow. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yeah. Especially with all the competition in Chicago alone, you know, you got like, you know, the other wrestling companies out there. Yeah. It's definitely like good to have, like you said, legitimacy with, especially with having Ray Mysterio and the uh, Lucha Brothers. But yeah, I, I get what you mean by that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And we're, well, and that being in Chicago, honestly, is probably one of the reasons why we're able to exist. I mean, mm -hmm. Chicago, like, like the, the indie, indie wrestling headquarters worldwide, as far as we're concerned. I mean, there's a reason that, you know, Cody and the Bucks chose Chicago for the original All In. Um, you know, it, there, there's a reason why ROH came to the Chicago Ridge Fieldhouse for all those years. There's a reason, you know, Chicago fans love wrestling. They love independent wrestling. They go crazy for it. And, um, you know, I mean, if we were in like, I don't know, Santa Fe, I don't know if we'd be able to, uh, you know, do what we're doing. So uh, again, another thing that we're just blessed with to be at the right place at the right time.
Uh, you kind of brought it up. Is Warrior Wrestling going to be just a, in Chicago, or is there any chances that it will travel? We have no plans to travel right now, uh, to full transparency. Um, we're not against it. We've had discussions, we've had talks. Um, we've got a lot of companies across the country that we either, that we've worked with in the past, you know, maybe sharing talent, like, hey, we'll fly this guy in and then they'll drive out to you and you fly him out, you know what I mean? Right. So there's, there's lots of different, um, especially in the Midwest and maybe in the Northeast, um, companies that we've worked with and that we know and that we like, and we're not against the idea of traveling, but, um, we're not, we're not, you know, really focused on it right now. Right now we're just trying to keep going. And, and maybe if the pandemic didn't happen back in 2020, we might be thinking about touring at this point, but uh, with, with all the other kind of variables up in the air right now, I think it's the, the, the prudent choice is to just, you know, stick with what you know and what, what you, uh, what you're able to do and, right. and hopefully doing it to the best of our ability. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. <laughs> right. Right. Oh. Is, you know, and especially, uh, so I was going to say, uh, how many seats do you guys normally sell or is available? Um, so the, the seats, seating at the, the, the gym that we hold the event in can hold like 3,500 people. Um, it's a, it's a big old high school gym. So, um, More than TNA. not a shot though, but you know. Well, sure. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it, I'm not saying we've sold that many tickets to a single show. That's just how many of the space can can uh, safely. Yeah, right. Right. So we've never really worried about um, running out of space or anything like that or numbers as far as that goes. So um, the answer to how many people are there, they're usually a couple hundred. Um, you know, we've had I think we've had shows that came in uh, just under a thousand. Um, we've had sh maybe. I think our smallest show might have been you know, maybe 400, something like that. Um, so it, it fluctuates, you know, obviously time of year, uh, obviously numbers were much larger in the pandemic or before the pandemic. Um, now, you know, you've got to have social distancing and we want to make sure that everyone is safe and doing this in the best way possible. Um, we've been very careful about how we've opened back up since the, uh, the pandemic started back in 2020. And, um, yeah, I think we probably had, I don't know, maybe close to about, probably around 500 on our last show. And um, we had a good time and, and we're happy to, to keep going with that. So we're hoping we'd love to sell the place out. Don't get me wrong. Um, maybe one day we'll, we'll get the, all the pieces right and get to that point. But uh, right now, I think it's, it's better and safer to keep the numbers at a much more controllable place. Right. Oh, I forgot to ask. For... Did you guys have the, the titles on your first show? Or we did, did not. The, when did the we titles had, came along? So we, well, be, because we were only going to be one show, we had no intention or need for a battle. Oh, yeah, right. So it wasn't until show two when um, we decided to create the, the uh, Warrior Wrestling title championship. Uh, we created that literally for show two um, because the – the match that that was kind of the main event of that show was called the War of Attrition match. And that is a Warrior exclusive. Um, nobody else has done it before or since, uh, except for us. And um, so it's just a very specific uh, elimination style match. We've got eight guys, then down to four, then down to two, then down obviously to one last man standing. And um, that was where we, we brought the belt in at show two. Um, we brought a women's belt in, gosh, uh, off the top of my head, I want to say show five, I think we crowned our first women's champion. And then um, we brought a Lucha title this summer, this past summer in uh, the stadium series back on uh, June 5th. We added our third belt, which is our Lucha belt. Nice. Nice. I didn't know about the Lucha title. Yeah, it's Adam Meese, right? He's a champion. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, He's Trey... Trey Miguel, Miguel is the, your current world uh, world champion, right? Warrior yeah, champion. he's held that for a year now. He actually won that belt back in August of 20 at our last uh, Stadium Series show last summer. And then the Rosa is the women's champion. She is. She, she beat Kylie. Um, so we've had three women's champions now. Um, and actually, we've had three men's champions now that I think about it. Brian Cage uh, was our first champ. Um, then we had Brian Pillman Jr. was our champ, right. and then now uh, Trey Miguel is our current champ. 
um, for our women's title, Tessa Blanchard was our first uh, champ. Then Kylie Ray uh, was our second champ. And right now, yeah, Thunder Rosa uh, took the title from Kylie Ray also this past summer. Wow. Pretty good. That's a pretty yeah, good, that's a good list. That's a good list of <laughs> champions. Just there alone, you have a promotion. Especially with Brian Cage, because I'm a huge uh, Brian Cage fan. You guys so ever we... thinking about doing like tag team titles down the road? That's so that's something that a lot of people have asked about. And again, not against it. Um, the, the, you don't, we don't, we don't have too many titles as, as part of it. You know, we don't run every week, you know, we don't run every month. Even we usually run somewhere between like four to seven shows a year. Right. So yeah. you don't want to, we, we don't want to have too many belts. Um, Cause then you, you get into the problem of, you know, how often do you defend every belt? You know, if, if, if one belt isn't defended on this show, is that going to affect the draw? Is that going to affect the quality? Is that going to affect, you know, the fan experience? So there's a lot of questions that kind of go into uh, creating essentially a division. Um, Cause right now we have the three, we have the men's, the women's and the Lucha, and we kind of see them each as their own division. And, um, for booking, booking purposes, for creative purposes, you know, all those things going together. Um, it's a big commitment to, to have a belt if you, if you do it the right way and you want to do it properly and you want to tell the story of your champions. Um, so you don't want to crowd your, your roster with, with too much. All right. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so how do you, when you book, okay, for example, your next show is December 12th, right? Yep, twelve twelve. How? When do you know when to have the next show, and how do you decide on who to have on that next show? So um, we have like a we have a mini we have kind of a booking team. Um, we have a, a group of people who have been with us either since day one or or very early on, um, whose opinions we trust, whose professional and personal recommendations go a long way. Um, we have talent reaching out to us all of the time, um, that there, there are people who are, you know, Hey, love to work with you, love what you're doing kind of a thing. Or we reach out to them. Hey, we love what you're doing. If you ever have any interest in working with us, you know, let us know. Um, there really is no formula. There is, there's, it's more of an art than a science, at least for us. If there is a formula, we just haven't figured it out yet. Um, but, uh, it's, it's more of an art than a science. So, you know, we, we just kind of reach out, put some feelers out. We, we have an idea in our head of who we want to work with, um, uh, specific people we want to target working with and bringing in as kind of like the, the main event type thing for a show. Um, and sometimes some shows just have a, a specific vibe, right? Like our last show in October, we had uh, Bret Hart as the special guest for our show. And uh, we wanted to put on some just great, true, hard wrestling matches. Right. So if you look up and down that card, there is just smash mouth, hardcore wrestling, not hardcore, it's wrong term, but just like, yeah, yeah. like you are wrestling up and down Te that card. Technical wrestling. Yes. Right. Well, there's tech. I mean, that, that had, that show had um, Tankman versus uh, Josh Alexander, just two beasts going at it. It had um, literally Beast Man was in a tag team with Warhorse. Dan the Dad, KLD brought the house down. We had, um, we had uh, Casey Navarro and Alex Shelley. We had uh, Davey Richards and Ace Austin. I mean, th th that's the kind of thing where because we had Brett, we wanted to kind of have like a, a vibe for the show, you know? And so right. sometimes it happens, sometimes they don't. We don't force it if it's not there. If it happens, great. But um, yeah, it's more of an art than a science. I, I wish I could tell you that it's, it's you know, A plus B equals C. But um, a lot of times it's, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and then things fall into place. We hear back from this person, or we hear back from that person. They say, hey, I'm available these dates. And then we kind of reach out to other people and say, who are you available? And so it, it, it's a lot of moving pieces. And just when it all comes together, you know, and that's when you book the show. You even had a uh, Buddy Matthews, right? Uh, what is it? Yeah, Buddy Matthews Buddy, versus Buddy Murphy. Buddy Murphy, Buddy Matthews now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Buddy Matthews versus uh, Chandler Hopkins. Yeah, another just hard fought, like smash your nose in kind of kind of match. How do you how do you, how did you get Will Osprey? That's what I want to know. 
Uh, well, we had Will back in 2019. He made his Warrior debut in December of 2019 at, uh, I want to say that was show seven. Um, and he, he he's incredible. He's great. I mean, he's incredible to work with. We had a New Japan heavy show, that show. So kind of like we talked about, like the Bret Hart, we wanted that specific style of wrestling for that show. Yeah specifically wanted to have new japan um wrestling highlighted on that show so we had um will osprey we had minaro suzuki on that show um we had um kurt angle was uh the special guest of that show we had um i'm trying to think who who also all of the shows are starting to <laughs> kind of mash together in my head um, we had uh, Rocky Romero. We had Amazing Red on that show. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of wanted that specific uh, feel for, for the show. And um, we were able to, to reach out to New Japan and um, reach out to Will. We, uh, we've been talking to Will for a long time. We've been trying to book him for literally since show one. We reached out to, to Will for show one. Um, and just the timing didn't work out. He, he had interest. He had expressed interest. And, you know, loved to work with us. And so there was mutual interest there. It was just a matter of finding the right dates, especially with Will being, um, you know, based out in, in Japan and being part of uh, New Japan out there. The timing of things have to really, really fall into place. So we were lucky enough for them to fall into place in December of 19. And here we are now, December of 21. And uh, he's coming back. Yeah, that's really great. I'm hoping I could go to that show because I'm a huge fan of him. I love his work. I love the, you know, he he's actually like, he he's a superhero when it, when Absolutely. he's in that ring. Um, Absolutely. We, Steve and I first saw Will uh, wrestle. The first time we, I, I personally remember seeing Will was actually, I, I referenced that PWG show back in 15. Um, Will Ospreay wrestled Kenny Omega at that show. And um, it was, now it's not the Will Ospreay and Kenny from obviously today, yeah. But, uh, it, it, you know, you would probably wouldn't be able to put that match on. Even PWG might not be able to pull that off at this point. But um, at that, I mean, at that time, that was one of those, that show was just such a stacked card. Um, and, and Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega, that match is one of the matches that we walked away from that weekend going like, this guy is going to take over the world. Like, it's just yeah. a matter of time before this guy literally takes over the world. Uh, and we didn't realize, you know, how quickly it was going to happen. Um, but it that that one was one of our favorite matches of all time. And uh, we walked away from that. We Obviously, we had no idea we were going to start uh, a wrestling company. But that was one of those things where we, we, we've been, you know, Will fans for life ever since that match. Right. Yeah. yeah, I became a, a Kenny Omega fan back when he was in PWG. He wrestled out uh, Davy Richard for the PWG World Championship. Yep. And that's where that was like the first time that I could remember that I like I noticed Kenny Omega. Like I think that was the first time like who I found out who he was. And then after yep. that I just started following his career. And uh I was just a fan, but I became a big Kenny Omega fan when he became the the cleaner for the Bullet Club. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That was when he kind of skyrocketed into yeah. like a whole other level. Um, you have anything else to say? Yeah. Um, growing up, were you a wrestling fan growing up, or did you like wrestling like as more as an adult teenager? Were you like a like a kid? Were you more of a teenager, adult when you started like watching wrestling and such? Yeah. Good question. Um, so as a kid, I I had somewhat of a sheltered childhood. Uh, my mom is a preacher, um, and and. So I, I grew up in a very uh, only child. So I grew up in a kind of a very, um, not strict, but a very intentional household about those things. So I actually wasn't allowed to watch wrestling back in the, you know, the Attitude Era, all that yeah. stuff. Um, my, my dad and I, my, you know, if mom went to bed early, my dad and I might flip it on and catch the end of, end of Raw or something. But uh, no, it wasn't really until um, late high school, early college, when I really started getting into wrestling and really started watching it with consistency and with passion. Uh, and then, like I said, after about 2015, once Steve showed me PWG and showed me what independent wrestling was, um, that's when I truly fell in love with wrestling. So you were more of a indie fan, more than you were on the ones on television. 
Well, no. So like getting started, uh, obviously I was, I was a big WWE fan. I mean, um, Edge and Christian were, were two of my favorites. Um, I loved Y2J, um, you know, the, the rock, um, but it, it was CM Punk, obviously his whole run with the, with WWE, um, that, that time, like that kind of time period was, was huge for me. I, we, Steve and I went, we've probably been to six WrestleManias together. Wow. Um, just taking taking trips. Uh, we we're actually at WrestleMania this past year down in April. Uh, April down in Tampa. Um, we've been to WrestleMania. We went to the first one out in New York at MetLife Stadium. We were down in Phoenix. Um, gosh, where else have we gone? Just all, Orlando, all over the place. Um, you so the Chicago one. Did you go to twenty two? I did not. I did not. No. Um, Steve was at that one though. Steve yeah. was at that one. I might, I might have seen him there. Who knows. <laughs> That's I was there too. Yeah, he was there. He I was likes like, bragging about I was a, that. I was 15 years old though, so I was a teenager. <laughs> he loves yeah, bragging I mean, that he's been to WrestleMania. I know, right? <laughs> so yeah, so definitely a, a WWE fan, especially getting started. Um, but then when, uh, like I said, once once we kind of he showed me the world of like PWG, ROH, of like the independent wrestling scene, um, especially in, like the mid 2000s. I mean, it was just blowing up. And um, it was it was exciting. It was different. It was new. Uh, Steve got me into New Japan at that time too, and and it was just. It's not that there's anything wrong with WWE or their their style or the way that they set up their shows or their. I mean, their production value is hands down the best, the best, the best. Like there's there's no way to put it. You know, um, the 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 thought and the effort and the energy that goes into their productions are incredible. Um, and I, and I love them and appreciate them for that, you know, but when it comes down to different styles of wrestling, different kind of, I think if we think of wrestling, Steve and I talk about like a buffet, right? Like there's, there's, uh, you know, this style, there's that style, there's this type, there's this things. There are different reasons and different things why people love wrestling. There is no one it, reason. It's easier for the wrestlers to stand out. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they have a good time. Um, one of the things I loved about, about independent wrestling is how close to the action you are, the way that you're able to rib back and forth with the guys, you know, where, oh, excuse me, you know, when, you, when you're sitting in an arena, like at Allstate or something, and I yell out, like, come on, CM Punk or something, like, he's not going to hear me. He has no idea what's going on. But right. I remember the ROH show in Chicago Ridge, and um, – we were, there was a, there's a match and we were going back and forth with Charlie Haas and it, it was just, it, it was a, it was a completely different environment, I think, which led to a completely different experience. And that was the experience that I loved. And that when given the opportunity, I wanted to recreate. And I think that's one of the reasons why Warrior has experienced some of the success that it has. At the end of the day, Steve and I are just independent wrestling fans. Uh, we are no different than the two of you. We we have certain styles that we like. We have certain things that that draw our attention. We still travel and go see shows all the time from other companies. Um, and when we're putting together our shows, when we look at our card or we're booking people, we always say, like, would I go see that show, right? Like, would I, this show was in Indianapolis or in uh, Milwaukee or, hell, maybe New Jersey, right? Like, would I put the effort in and time in to go see that show? And if the answer is no, then we've done something wrong. Uh, we don't ever want to put on a show that we would not take a four-hour road trip for. Um, and I think that that shows because we do have a lot of fans who come in. I mean, we've had guys take planes, trains, and automobiles to get to our show. Uh, and so it, uh, it seems to resonate with fans because that's who we are. We are just wrestling fans. What a wrestling company. <laughs> yes, yes. With that, with that small caveat, yes, we just, just two two kids who love wrestling and, and have found themselves in the position to do something with it. So, because that, that's our goal too with this podcast is to one day start our own wrestling company. So uh, is there any advice that you could give us or even any other listeners who want to start their own wrestling company? Uh Sure. We, so we kind of fell into it. Like I said, we weren't intentional about it. We weren't trying to start a company. We just tried to put on a, a good show. Um, we, we wanted to, from the very beginning, we, we said that, um, you know, win, lose, or draw, we were going to treat the guys right, the locker room and the girls in the locker room right. We were going to take care of them. 
Um, there, there's a lot of things that happen backstage in wrestling that um, fans don't really know about. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't always um, go in favor of the, the performers, the workers. And uh, we wanted to make sure that that was not the case at our show. Mm-hmm. We wanted, to, first and foremost, our, our thought process is treat the guys like a million bucks and they'll treat you right too, you know? And um, I think if you, if no matter what you do, but especially in wrestling, if, if you come at a situation with that perspective of I'm going to take everyone I work that, that works for me, I'm going to take care of them. We're going to get them, you know, the flights they need, put them in a good hotel, have safe transportation to and from the venue, give them food to eat, stuff to drink, uh, you know, places to relax, places to, to, to prepare give them a, provide them a safe environment. Um, you know, if you do things from that perspective, you'll, you'll always come out ahead because that is one of the reasons why we're able to book such good people. And I think that would probably be my other piece of advice. Um, book good people, work with good people, because if you are good people and you surround yourself with good people, then good things happen. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the things that goes into our booking as well. If, if, if you are a good person first, that's where we start. If you are, are um, you know, someone that, that we just have a difficult time working with or just kind of heads clash, things like that. Um, if, if our values don't align, things like that, then, you know, it's, it's nothing personal. It's just maybe we're not the right fit to be working together, but you know, when all those things do come together and all those things do line up, uh, it makes for an incredible environment. And I, and I think that's the most important thing you need to create. If you want to be a, a promoter, or, uh, own your own wrestling company and to create an environment where people feel safe and people feel comfortable because when people feel safe and comfortable, they're willing to take risks. They're, they're willing to try new things. They're willing to, to, to give their all every single time they walk through that curtain. And, um, since Steve and I can't wrestle, <laughs> if we want this thing to, to work, we got to make sure that the people we're bringing in are good people and that we take care of them. And clearly you are taking care of them because they're giving you like five-star matches on your shows. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, we, Yeah, we, we think so. I mean, we, we walk away from every show going like, was that our best show? It might have been our best show. And we find ourselves saying that like uh, after every show, because like you said, these guys come out and they they see the other names on the card. You know, like they know yeah. Brett, like the show, they know Bret Hart is watching them wrestle. Like if that's not motivation for you to do your best, I don't know what is. And they're always trying to like have the best match of the night. Absolutely. And it's just like, uh, I forgot the words I was going to say, but yeah, basically they try to go outdo their, their outdo each other. Outdo each other and try to get that best match of the night. And sometimes where there's wrestlers who may open your show and they're like, I'm trying to prove to you that I can main event and close out the show one day. So, um, well, our last, our last couple shows, we've kicked the show off with our title, one of our titles. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we, there, there is, yes, there is a, a quote unquote main event that happens to come at the end of the show, yeah. but in, we try and book shows where any match is a main event quality match. Right. And that's like the best way to do it. Like uh, we were talking about, um, I forgot what shows, uh, well, once again, PWG, they have like every, when you see their lineup, it's like that can main event of the main event that show, you know, and that's the cards that you have as well. And I could see like you do have the idea from PWG or you're expired by them because it's like you have every show that every match you have, it's like that can main event that show alone. Yeah. And it's just that's like cool. that's how that's how you have a great show. Um, so I know, do you have anything else to? No, uh, no, you. All right, yeah. Well, of course I do. <laughs> uh, so, is there? Because you, majority of your shows, you have big names. Is there any other wrestlers you have that are indies here in Chicago, like from freelance Chicago style wrestling? Lou, uh, oh yeah, Gally. yeah. Absolutely. We oh so so yeah. Golly, we love Golly. We love freelance CSW. Um, we Golly and I are not I we. Um, work together very regularly, especially with some of the luchadors that we bring in. 
Um, we we get we we go to golly shows all the time because they find some of the best talent that that we may not even know is is up and ready to go, okay. and uh, we go scouting at their shows because we're like I said we're you know the the Chicago indie wrestling scene is is the best in the world. Um, so we would be wasting our time and resources if we didn't work with those companies, if we didn't know those companies and have working relationships with those companies, um, that would be a disservice to our fans. Cause then we wouldn't be putting on the best caliber shows that we could. So absolutely we've were, I mean, we, we've had tons of, of freelance wrestling guys, the freelance wrestling Academy, their kids come out and volunteer and help us at every single show. We could not put on our shows without those kids coming in. Um, the, the black and brave kids from Iowa come in for shows. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's the kind of thing where there is like this, this big, huge support system within indie wrestling, especially in Chicago. So yeah, we've absolutely tapped into that and we're happy to be a part of that uh, pipeline of, of companies that are able to work independently, but also work together and have some synergy when it makes sense too. Have you ever had a show where it was like, like freelance, they work with freelance underground they have like a show together have you ever done anything like that um not with any chicago-based shows we've done um two shows with impact um so in uh october of 19 right before so bound for glory um, oh was, yeah yeah that's right bound for it glory. was in chicago 19 and we did a joint warrior impact show in south bend indiana on friday and then we did a Impact Warrior show at uh, Bourbon Street on Saturday, Prelude to Glory. And then um, obviously Bound for Glory was, was their thing at the Odium uh, on Sunday. But for the two days leading up to Bound for Glory, back last time it was in Chicago, we did do two joint shows with Impact. Yeah. But um, so was it your talent versus their talent or it no, was just separate? It, was uh we're gonna work collaboratively we're gonna work together and put together the show there was a lot of the impact talent a lot of warrior talent is impact town our current champ is also the x division champ yeah. so you know um and actually when brian cage became our champion he was the x division well, champ yeah. well so um you know it, it there's there's a lot of of moving parts that kind of work seamlessly between us to begin with so that collaboration just kind of made sense yeah. and it worked out <laughs> absolutely um you have nothing else to ask no about the um, new show coming up oh Muslims. yeah uh december 12th december 12th do you have any more lineups for that card or show it's a different venue too right you're not you're not, it, you're not at the high school yeah so we are, I, I'll, I'll lead with that actually before we get into the the card too much um there is <laughs> there is a um a scheduling conflict that arose after we set the date for the show with the school. Um, there is a cheerleading competition that um, was originally not going to interfere with that specific part of the building, but that tournament has expanded and grown so much so that now they're going to need the space that we normally occupy. Uh -huh. And so um, we had to either cancel the show or move the show. And when you've got Will Ospreay, you don't cancel. So um, we're actually moving right down the street. I'm not sure how well you know the, the south suburbs, but um, the Tinley Park Convention Center is right off of I-80. Um, when you get off at, I believe it's, uh, was at Harlem? Um, it's, it's like right down the street from um, the, oh gosh, Hollywood Amphitheater. Is that what it's called now? It was the Tweeter Center when I was going to high school and going to concerts there. Yeah, but, yeah I'm not um, so familiar. I live, I live in Berwyn, so, well, for now. <laughs> This yeah, bro. so I think you, yeah, I think that's not that far from there. I think Tinley Park is like 20 or so minutes. Oh, so yeah, it's, Tinley Park, I saw. It's, 80. It's, uh, it's right down the street from, uh, from right. It's literally like when you're coming off the highway, the parking lot's right there. Oh, so incredible. it's actually, it's actually a little bit easier to get to because Marion Catholic is, you have to get off the highway and drive a little, you know, a little bit off the highway. But um, the convention center is right there. It's an, it's again, it's another big, huge space. Um, is it it's indoor actually, or outdoor? It's indoor. It is indoor. indoor. It's um, yeah, we're Chicago. Not, <laughs> it's because he's at parking lot. So I got, I was like, I got confused for a second. <laughs> well, yeah, there is a huge parking lot. So that's actually the space where Marion Catholic has our um, our graduations. So when I graduated oh, high school, okay. that space. So when we had to leave Marion, that was the next obvious choice because as because um, Marion Catholic High School has hosted many events at that space 
when the school itself wasn't the right venue to host an event, the school hosts events there, similar, like I said, like graduation. Um, so that was just kind of like an, an obvious choice for us. If we can't be in our first home of Marion, then let's use Marion's second home of the Tinley Park Convention Center. So yes, the very first show we've ever done there. Um, not Again, not intentional. We were planning on running the show at Marion until the, the cheerleading tournament took over. And we, we were not going to get in the way of the, the Marion students being able to do what they love. And that, that's the whole reason we do this is so that they have the opportunity to keep doing what they love there. So we were happy to be displaced so that they could grow in what they were doing that's good awesome. yeah um yeah that's really awesome um i forgot what i was gonna ask the next question but osprey no but the uh, rest of the lineup oh yeah the rest of the lineup do you have any uh updates on the card so we have a lot of names to release that we haven't released to the public yet um so i, I there's not a ton that i can say i will tell you uh, right now, off the top of my head, I can think of about seven or eight matches that we've got on the books. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be announcing some of that talent very quickly coming up. Um, my, my partner, Steve, actually just got married in September right after, um, you know, we kind of we kind of wrapped everything up uh, with our summer lineup. Um, and so we're kind of we had our show here in our, uh, October. Um, we're getting, we're getting ready to make some big, big announcements. So big names coming. Uh, I can tell you, we've got more AEW talent coming back. I can tell you, we've got um, more new Japan coming back. I can tell you, we've got um, some recently uh, ROH talent coming. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a really big show. We have a couple people, we have some recent, some uh, very recently uh, WWE talent that's going to be coming. So, we try and bring you the best every time and, and try and take as many pieces from as many different places that otherwise wouldn't be able to come together and try and bring them together and put them on a platter for you guys. So unfortunately I can't give you some names right now that I'd love to. Um, but I can tell you, keep your eyes peeled. We will be releasing uh, more booking announcements as well as the matchup announcements uh, very, very soon. Um, but on the show, you can expect to see new Japan, AEW, ROH, and uh, very recently, WWE as well. It and sound, obviously, it sounds like you're having a PWG show. Like that's how I keep pitching. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. really awesome. It's great though. lineup. Yeah, on. but we understand that you can't really tell us who's gonna be there. And uh, you said Steve just got married. Uh, yeah, back in September. Um, he, well, he just congrats married. to Steve. <laughs> Thank you. I'll pass that along to him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's. He actually, he just got married and then actually just this past week was his birthday. So he's been pretty busy yeah. um, with, with just life kind of happening yeah. now. So, uh, and that's part of the reason why we haven't made all the announcements that we've wanted to make yet, because sometimes life gets in the way. Uh, no, yeah, we totally understand that. And um, congrats to Steve and happy birthday to him as well. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll pass that along. Thank you. And um, I, since you mentioned Ring of Honor, they have released a lot of talent. Is there somebody, not saying for the for the next show, but is there somebody when you found out that they got released, is there a name on that show or company that you were like, oh, my, I, we have to book this guy? Um, well, there, there's some names actually that we've worked with before, right? So um, trying to think like uh, Jonathan Gresham was in our title match back in October. Um, and we've, we've worked with Jonathan Gresham throughout the, the pandemic. Actually, he's been a huge part of our um, summer series lineups. And uh, so we love Gresham. We love working with him. He is an incredible person and an amazing wrestler. Um, so obviously, we'd like to continue working with him. Um, we've had, uh, we had Bandito before he signed with ROH. Um, and we loved him. He was great, great people, great wrestler. Um, we'd love to work with him again. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, me personally, just again, kind of my fandom. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of the Briscoe brothers. Uh, so even though we have a tag, you know, a division necessarily, we do sometimes have tag matches when we can highlight tag teams. Um, and so that would be one, like, I mean, if I could ever get the Briscoes on a show, that would be like a, like a, you know, bucket list checkoff kind of thing for, for me. Um, but their, their talent, their talent is so deep. 
I mean, there, there are so many other names that I could dive into that, like, yes, obviously we would love to work with them. Uh, we just haven't had the opportunity to work with them yet. Right. Eventually you will. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Jay I'm, hoping, Lethal. I'm, hope, I'm hoping, yeah. Jay Lethal. I really, I, you gotta have Jay Lethal on that show. <laughs> I, I could go, that, that's the thing. Their, their roster is so deep. I could go, I could just keep going, you know, and um, Silas Young, we've, we've, we've had uh, conversations with in the past before he resigned with ROH. Like there's, there's lots of guys that we love on their, on their roster. And um, we actually just, our last show, Roxy, their women's champion um, was on our last show defending their, their title back in October. So the, the, we're very excited to see what ROH comes up with next. Uh, it's a bummer right now. It's kind of sad and it's a bummer that, that, they're experiencing what they are but um you got to give them credit i mean they everything i've read said that they took care of their guys first they took care of their locker room everyone's been getting paid even though they haven't been working throughout the pandemic keeping food on the table keeping bills you know paid for these guys and and so they did it the right way um but obviously that's not sustainable forever when you're not also running shows and having steady income streams um, at some point, something's got to give. So um, right. more credit to them. We have all the respect in the world for them and all the love in the world for ROH. We know that they're going to do great things in the future once they're able to kind of reset things and kind of start fresh. Um, but much, much love and respect for them and everything they've done to get to this point. And we can't wait to see what they're doing in the future with that roster too. Yeah. It's like you said, it's a bummer that what's going on, but they took care of their, you know, they're they're basically their family this is right well way. and that's they're good they're gonna act better than ever i mean yeah but like good people work with good people and when good people get together trying to make a good thing happen you know that's when magic happens and and i have no doubt that that's what's going to happen with roh it may take some time before it all kind of all the pieces fall into place but i guarantee you you know a year from now if we're doing another uh another podcast here we'll be talking about like the, the, the ROH, like rise of the Phoenix kind of thing. Yeah. That's probably going to be a, a, that's a good pay-per-view name too. <laughs> <laughs> and they can have it. It's, it's, it's theirs if they want it. Um, so from, let's, let's just go ahead and mention WWE because, you know, WWE wrestlers are into superstars. They can't wrestle anywhere else, but is there any two guys or women that you would love to have on the show if they were ever released or had the opportunity to work outside of the company while they're still on contract? That's a good question. I don't even know. I've never really considered it because it's just not, you know, it's not really an option. Right. Um, you know, personally, um, like I said, growing up from, uh, for me, it would be, it'd be a dream if one day I could ever have edge on a show. Um, I, I was so thrilled when he came back. Um, you know, it that that for me that would be, that would probably be it. It'd probably be Edge. Um, yeah, probably won't wrestle, but you could always have him as a special guest. Never know, right? You never know. So we we don't, don't want to rule anything out, but um, you know, and until WWE plays their cards, it's we we have no cards to play. So right. you just kind of sit back and enjoy their their product and. Uh, when, when they make their decisions that are in their best interest. And sometimes uh, we're able to work with people after they've made decisions that we previously couldn't, you know, we're happy to. Uh, and I notice on your, uh, every show you have, you have numbers. Is there, are you guys ever gonna have like, uh, like an actual name for all your shows? Like have a big event, like Bound for Glory, Final Battle? Like, are you gonna have your WrestleMania? I don't know. We've never really thought about it. We've never been intentional about it. Again, uh, the reason we went with the numbers is because when we started, we had no idea how many there would right. be. Oh, so after show one, we had to wait until we could get approved for show two. After show two, we had to wait to get approved for show three, you know, so on and so forth. I mean, now we, we, we've built up that credibility that we don't need to wait for approval for the next show. But, um, you know, it is... Uh, it's really just not... It's not something we've ever really uh, thought about because it's just never never come up i guess because i don't mind the numbers uh i like the numbers it's pretty cool 
because it shows like especially for people who never heard of royal wrestling so they could see like oh wow they had these many shows already i i have to check them out yeah um, i know i was just curious if there was ever any ideas of having your own wrestlemania well technically we had um so it was august of 20 we had friday night lights right friday it wasn't uh it was that first show after the pandemic um it was actually the first first wrestling show to really bring back fans um in a, in a major capacity way um you know we're we're happy to be able to do that with the football field at the school and, and having those resources available to us um so yeah technically we did friday night lights i guess was the one um kind of non-numbered name show so we're not against it um it's just not something that we're gonna prioritize i guess and part of it like you said we like the numbers just to be like god can you believe there's already been this many right. like can you believe we're still like this is still a thing they haven't like gotten rid of us yet and hopefully they don't <laughs> here's open and uh anything else on that list no just um uh, gotta think of something on the spot answer all my questions what <laughs> there has to be something all right well i guess i guess uh anything else you want to say or add to this episode is there anything uh, that we could have missed no i think we we've been we've covered a lot um sorry steve couldn't be here with us like i said he's he's got a bunch of stuff kind of going on right now uh in his shoot job and real life and um you know, maybe hopefully we can get them on next time. Yeah, hopefully. And um, hopefully both of you guys on the show. Um, but yeah, well, thank you for your time. And thank you for, you know, doing this episode, being our first YouTube episode, video, whatever we decide to call it. We appreciate your time. And, I'm honored. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, you got to check out, uh, people got to check out the Warrior Wrestling Show number 17, uh, December 12th in Tinley Park. What time does it start? Uh, it's a matinee show. Um, so I don't quote me on this. Oh, gosh, uh, it, it's like, uh, I want to say it's like a two o'clock, three o'clock bell, something like that. Okay. Afternoon. Afternoon show. So it's the middle of the day. <laughs> so you guys it's check a it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, and um, once we figure it out, if it's okay with you, Eric, we'll put the link on their website on the, I don't know anything about YouTube yet. But the, it'll be the link down there, and that way you could go click on that link, and it'll take them to their website if you would like to purchase some tickets. Yeah, absolutely. They're already on sale. Already, already on sale. Hopefully, they're not sold out by the time we upload this video. <laughs> or uh, maybe, hopefully. Yeah, yeah hopefully. For, for, for so you. Much. Yeah, hopefully for you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, once again, Eric, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Eric, I mean, Eric, ever. <laughs> All right, listeners, this will be this. This will be it for this episode. I'm Ever, and this is Ian, and we are out. You're supposed to say bye. Bye, guys. Oh my gosh. Do do do.